Start again, babe. Start again. Sorry. Start again. Hi, everyone. Today is February 17, 2021. And some of you have horrible snowstorms. And um, I hope this um, hour will bring you a little bit more worms since we will talk about greens. And uh, some of you, of course, will say, I never use greens, I mix in the fly, and that's absolutely correct for you. But those of you who uh, paint nature, landscapes, or portraits, today hour will be absolutely valuable because we will show you 10 different greens, and um, seeing them together was quite discovery even for us. So let's talk about a little bit uh, next um, uh, Art Materials Advisor, what will be on March 17th, and we will talk about all our blocks. And uh, next week, don't forget, uh, here at Natural Pigments, we will have another studio tips, and that would be about rational approach to um, colored palette. George had that lecture actually uh, maybe 10 years ago and uh, we gave that lecture for several uh, ateliers and studios and some of the information was, uh, you know, kind of like flying away. So, but 10 years later, all of you are interested and so we finally uh, had the attempt to put that online. So uh, next studio tips on March uh, 17th, uh, March 24th, will be about oiling out. So I know all of you waiting will wait for that one, and so that would be interesting one. So let's start today with greens, and um, here we go. And like always will be, so it will be uh, video and uh, music and we will talk all over. You can ask any questions during that session and so we will answer as, um, as they go. Let's go. So here's the natural pigments. Uh, we have five different terra verde, so five different green earths. One is from Verona, another one from Nicosia, and um, we have Antica green, which is very olive uh, green, and two beautiful greens from uh, Tavush area of Armenia. So we will cover all of them today. And I'm sorry, I forgot to say, my name is Tatiana Zaitseva here at Natural Pigments. I'm assisted today, like as always, with uh, George O'Hanlon. So here uh, we start with um, Verona Green Earth. It's, um, you saw first, uh, first couple seconds, I will show on every each of them. Uh, so the behavior and you saw then how buttery and quite fluffy that color is. And uh, why did we do this? Because we actually wanted to show you so how even among uh, five different earth colors, um, it will be, um, you know, they behave all different. And um, you will see the difference, definitely will see the difference uh, when we show you synthetic uh, colors. So here's our Nicosia. So you see that that's already more um, stringy, <coughs> stringy, and um, so and uh, definitely uh, feels heavier than um, than uh, Verona. And here I'm trying on first puddle. I try to mix approximately 50% of uh, lead white to the uh, to the the color. And you can see how both of them are quite transparent 
and um, tinting quite easily and fast. These three Italian earths are all glauconite minerals. They're all natural minerals. And um, they, they vary. The, the mineral varies in color from pale greens to very dark, dark greens. But they're very transparent, all of them. So if, uh, if we're talking about uh, hues or um, the colors, so then Verona green much warmer than Nicosia, although, although here uh, on, you know, on video you can't see as much. It's why we will show another shot from, uh, from side, so then it will be much more visible on that case. So I would say that Nicosia green is a little bit stronger in tinting than, uh, than Verona. And then we have Antica. This is absolutely short and buttery paint. And it's due to, um, to the uh, clay content. And so you will see right now how absolutely transparent uh, color that is. And so the moment I'm, I will add white, it will lose uh, its strength. Very olive. So these two Italian green earths, the Nicosia is of course from Cyprus, but the two Italian green earths come from uh, famous sources of Veronese green. And now we're in our Armenian green earths. So Tavush is um, a very north um, east part of Armenia and uh, we were uh, we are so proud to have this uh, this colors actually in um, in natural pigments we have 10 um, um, Armenian colors so then uh, we have a couple greens couple uh, yellows couple reds so uh, please check it if uh, very interesting pure colors just absolutely clean all of them and uh, although Tavush, uh, both Tavush greens are uh, transparent, so uh, among the reds, uh, we have probably the most powerful um, uh, colors there. The Tavush green earths differ from the Italian and the uh, Cypress green earth because these are uh, uh, glauconite minerals, whereas the Italian and the uh, Cyprus or the Nicosia green earth is, uh, is a celadonite. Two different types of green earth minerals, uh, but very similar in their consistency. They both have the color index pigment green 23, so they don't have a different color index number. In fact, all of them have um pigment uh, 23 23 yeah. Col P the color index PG, PG 23, 23. Mm -hmm. this is very transparent and so it it's very similar to the other tabouche but it's quite a bit more transparent as will be evident here as soon as Tanya adds the yet white <clears throat> green earths are so versatile because of that low tint strength. They can be used to modulate colors to, to give, especially in flesh tones, they work quite well. You can uh, see right now how transparent compared to even to first uh, three. So there's the lineup yeah. of the five green earths that we have. Now we would like to mix them with red. And I want to remind you, I'm not an artist. I'm 
<laughs> so I. But you're a was, color person. I was. Sure. <laughs> yes, I'm color. And so <clears throat> you can see. So I, we are mixing here with uh, red, um, cadmium red light. And I put so small amount right on. I didn't even put the color. I just tap the uh, tap the um, cadmium mm -hmm. and put the tip of that um, uh, color to the the green, and you can see how it's all already overpowered green. So, so I wanted to have some kind of neutral. So then this is what. Uh, with mixing, so I, I'm trying to put back to to neutral color. And that was the point with the red, is to create kind of a neutral, just so you see how it, it neutralizes. But as you can see, green earths don't really go into, are very difficult to go into a, a, a very true gray. Um, with cadmium. But with, with on the cadmium. other hand, if you would use uh, any of our earth colors, that was much easier to do but since you many of you uh, much more i mean easier you, recognize cadmium so uh, we decided to mix with cadmium and um, but on your home exercise <laughs> you can do this with uh, any earth colors and it will be much easier to mix but on the end i still was able to to mix uh, beautiful neutrals which we can say uh, on our synthetic, but it's in future. It goes into a really chocolatey red there, or excuse me, brown. <laughs> now look at what the Antica does. This is completely different now. That's a very small amount of cadmium red. Com uh, uh, Contica lost completely the color at all, so it was impossible to even to see through through red. So again, reminding everybody, these green earths are comp are are natural green earths. That's the origin from minerals. The right two are from glauconite and the left three are uh, celadonite. And this just becomes red. <laughs> That's really... If you have any questions, feel free to Put them in the chat. We can answer them as we go through this presentation. It's really exciting to see these colors. All together. All together, yeah. yeah one space here. Oh, look, that magically appeared more color there. <laughs> yeah, here um, we here used, lot, we used yeah. even more, uh, more and more. We, we add uh, more Antica. But I want it to be even with uh, all colors, so I add uh, to all of them uh, almost identical amount, and I just wanted to see how all of them to same amount of red will, will behave. And when we will, uh, we will uh, talk about synthetic colors and you will see then the same amount, I will add absolutely the same amount to uh, red, to greens, and that will not make even slight difference. There's no questions today about.
And there's that very transparent tabouche. It's so much more transparent than the other one. Elizabeth asks, are there any specific color, temperature, rheological, optical characteristics that distinguish glauconite versus selenite, selenite. when ground in paint? Not, nope. not nope. really. No. Nope. You know, we, can't, we can't say selenite does one thing and glauconite does another thing. It's, it's so dependent on auxiliary uh, types of minerals. Here's exciting one, malachite. Um, we finally ground our malachite. Don't ask us when we will sell that, but for now we want to show you that, uh, that color. And I will uh, show you on uh, right on left side, it will be with white. And again, I will add 50% of white to that puddle to see how that will tin out, tin down. <laughs> and as beautiful this um, bluish green malachite here, when uh, it's, uh, it's almost like cousin to azurite because uh, in nature you will find two of them uh, together. And so, uh, that's why here it's actually looking quite bluish color, but uh, when you put together with uh, azurite, it it's, uh, it's it does look very yellowish. But while we uh, talking here, so I wanted to add a little bit, and you can see how quite transparent that color is. How easy to to tint. Malachite is a natural mineral also, and this one uh, we derive from, uh, from China. Marilyn asks, if you add oleogel to tavouche green, would it be the same as transparent tavouche? No, uh, it's slightly different hue, so you will uh, find that different. No, because see again, uh, uh, tavouche green is more transparent because it's other minerals there too. And that's what giving the different colors uh, to, although they are almost from, uh, you know, they are from same um, area, but they quite different in, um, yeah, in color. Uh, Sonia asks, do you have a list of minerals, pigments that can be found natural in the U.S.? Uh, we don't actually have. That's actually interesting idea. But <laughs> we actually don't have many minerals that are derived from yes. the U.S. Um, yes. We, have, uh, we work with 14 different countries, but it's somehow we, we don't have a lot from, uh, from United States. And uh, you see how beautiful, beautiful, and very easy, um, neutral, I made from, uh, from malachite. And cadmium red light. And cadmium mm -hmm. red light, yes. <clears throat> and of course, when we talk about our terra verde, it's, um, you know, and malachite is different. Malachite is uh, mineral. Where it's a copper carbonate mineral. Yes. Yeah. So the behavior will be completely different. It's basically ground stone. And so it's quite heavy uh, working with. Of course, here I already overpowered it with red, but I believe I will bring back to, to neutral. Becky asks if uh, malachite mixed with lead tin yellow light is that a common mixture? Um, it there is some examples of that um, throughout history. Malachite's a very old pigment. You saw in that one image um, that's a 15th century painting. Uh, it was often you it's it was often used as the bright green. Malachite actually existed in the earliest Egyptian dynasties. So it's, it's quite, quite a long history, but it completely disappeared 
as a pigment by at least 16th, 17th century. It was replaced by an artificial copper carbonate pigment, otherwise known as green vice. This is also a very large particle pigment. It's, it's quite, quite coarse. You can't grind this too small. Otherwise, it will look col uh, lose color completely. It will be almost uh, whitish uh, green. Here we go. Here's our uh, four modern I would say, although uh, at this point we, we, we can call some of them historical colors, it's chrome, oak, uh, chrome green, it's um, cinnabar green, uh, chromium oxide green, and viridian. So look this behavior comp uh, compared to what we were talking with, um, with green earth. It's very toughy String. and stringy and very heavy. That's because this is a hue. This is not a single pigment color. Of course, there was never any cinnabar that was green, but this was a name that originated in the first half of the 19th century in the catalogs of uh, different color men, such as Windsor Newton. In fact, I think it, uh, it appeared first um, as a uh, name designating chrome yellow and Prussian blue, which is exactly the two pigments we use in this particular color. Cinnabar green also designated a green copper tartrate or copper arsenic pigment, but uh, of the 18th century. But this is, uh, but by the 19th century, the, the name stood for a historical a hue like this. Today when you see cinnabar green um, in, in, uh, among our lines, it's usually a cadmium yellow with, uh, with a, a blue. There's that, that chrome one. green, very stringy. And like everything in our company, we are trying to st stick with original formula. That's why George created this um, like, uh, like he said already, original, with original chromium, uh, chrome ochre, uh, chrome... Chrome yellow. Chrome yellow, thank you. And uh, Prussian blue. That's so why again, these are the, the same two pigments. Yes. Um, chrome yellow, Prussian blue, but different proportions and see how different it is. And it's, what's interesting is you're going to see a huge difference how these behave compared to the single pigment colors on the right. And that's an important note for artists because you often are using pigment mixtures to make your own blends and uh, they have their own particular kinds of issues. A couple of people have asked about malachite. Um, you want me to go ahead and answer those? Uh, one second, I, uh, one sure. second so then we will not go that far from. So you probably notice then on cinnabar green, I mix uh, white just to see the how it will, you know, the tint. So I mix uh, the three, uh, three times white just to make it a little bit, you know, different in hue. So, uh, and remember in, um, in our natural colors, it was just, I, I had once and uh, you, could, you could see how that was transparent. Here's very powerful colors. Uh, I would think that much more difficult to work with. Uh, and another thing I, uh, I would say then, uh, just because of the Prussian blue, and of course, obviously in uh, the chrome green, we use a little bit more Prussian blue, so that it dries quite fast. So that's, that's my remark. So yeah, we can go back to malachite, so it's not a problem. So cinnabar, gr cinnabar <coughs> green and chrome green are both com composed, historically were composed of chrome yellow, which is a lead chromate color, and Prussian blue. Today, if you see those, they are composed of different pigments uh, by other manufacturers. We wanted to reproduce the historical values of that. 
So um, chromium oxide green, I, I definitely could address to um, our Virgil Elliot because this color, um, I personally didn't want George even to make it, but Virgil was pushing us years and years and years and we finally did that color. I'm happy we did it because it's, uh, it's so different from all our greens. Although uh, my my excuse for that was like, okay, everybody else making uh, chrome green, why to bother and uh, make it? That's that's a whole idea in in natural pigments. We try do not uh, make a colors like everybody else. But here we go. So here is our viridian. That's another color. What um, probably. Elizabeth was asking the most, so <laughs> now we are making uh, Viridian. And again, I'm happy because even to see how that difference uh, with natural colors, it's unbelievable. Beautiful color, beautiful. And you notice on when I was tapping on the beginning, very fluffy, very light. And um, so it's um i think it's the lightest from all 10 colors so viridian is a hydrated chromium oxide which is different mm -hmm. same chromium oxide as the former one which is the chrome the chromium uh, oxide green but but the chromium oxide hydrated is very transparent <clears throat> Now we're going to take our same colors, mix them with the red, so you can see how they behave trying to make neutrals out of that. So added in exactly the same amount what I added to, um, to our natural colors. basically didn't do a thing. I mean, a little bit, but not how in natural colors we already, by that time, we already completely lost the, the green. By the way, the cinnabar green and the chrome green can be done in a lot of different shades or hues from dark to light tones. We chose this kind of in the middle of the road. And some people, some, some companies actually had a light cinnabar green, a dark cinnabar green, a medium cinnabar green, and same with the chrome green. Uh, and because these are mixtures, they you can vary the the tones quite uh, quite a bit. Victoria says would love for you to make a raw umber green shade your cinnabar green is a dream come true for me thanks thanks victoria the uh we do have a greenish umber it's the italian green umber in a uh, range of pigments <clears throat> we do have uh, italian umber and italian green umber it's why in a uh, range of oils we did make only the uh, uh, greenish version because we do have a lot of umbers and so then it did make sense um i mean i would think it's probably that greenish but again um it's um i i know some some um other companies have i think they call turkish turkey turkey umber umber something yeah, like green this umbers, so. <coughs> we don't you know in practice we don't <coughs> modify our earth colors and in fact, none of our colors are hues except for five historical hues uh, that we, we, we set out to make. And again, um, these five historical uh, colors have only two colors in mix. Yeah. And we definitely made that, and um, like I said, with the original formula, and so we don't want to, to add more than it is. <laughs> And you can see how this, oh, here we go, uh, because uh, that's what I wanted to mention. While I was mixing, and it's not that much time I spent, but it's already become tacky. So 
the two uh, to this uh, chrome green and cinnabar green dries not dries but settle quite fast so I um, in order for me just to to work a little bit longer so I added uh, oleo gel just to show you the color and of course so I, I struggle with cinnabar for sure and um, it doesn't matter how much I put back green or put back red it's uh, it was not mixing uh, quite uh, neutral and uh, it's due to because this uh, colors are mixed and so of course the major color here it's uh, yellow and it's immediately going to orange and yeah that's that's the whole point of these uh, mixtures they don't behave like a green pigment they will tend to behave more like the dominant color in the mixture So chromium oxide green is um, or was a very expensive color in the 19th century. Today it's not, it's still a little expensive, but not too bad. And uh, so we don't often see it as much as the hydrated form of it, which is the viridian next to it. Chromium oxide green is very powerful too, so it's just unbelievable, um, but much easier to work with, that's for sure. It was generally believed that this pigment wasn't introduced until 1862, but it was found in a painting by J.M.W. Turner of 1812, and uh, was also publicized in a manual uh, in 1850. So, but and I and believe it's because it's high cost that it wasn't widespread. The Viridian uh, goes back, the, um, this particular type of Viridian, which is known as Guinea's Green, uh, was patented in 1859. But again, they find examples of this pigment in earlier paintings and um, was heavily used, Viridian was heavily used by Van Gogh and many of the French Impressionists, which makes a lot of sense. It's a perfect color for the cool palettes of that time. Jason was asking about Victoria Green, which is a pigment we make. It was actually never made in oils. It was, it was popular among egg tempera painters in the late 19th century. So beautiful, neutral here, but you can't see very much on, uh, on camera. So what we did, we actually added a little bit more white. Oh, okay, here I am, mixing a little bit back and forth. <laughs> Trying to figure out the color. Nope, doesn't work really. Oh, but the Viridian so does make yes, wonderful you neutrals, yes. as you can see here. Look at this gray as we as Tatiana mixes Beautiful. a little bit of white, lead white in there. Nice. Now we wanted to show you how the same greens are mixed with lead white compared to titanium white. So here's I took the coolest among the uh, natural co natural uh, greens it's nicosia green so uh, mix exact amount with um, with lead white and exact amount with titanium white <coughs> And you're going to see a huge difference in transparency between the two whites. And if we, if we mixed them in different proportions so we get the same tone, you would see a different color too. So titanium is much bluer, colder white, and the lead white is much warmer. That's even visible in this film here, as so you can see the pure pigment. 
And this is this is our pure titanium white, isn't it? That on the right? on the bottom, yes. Yeah. Yes. So no fillers in that titanium white. So it's it's very strong. There was a question about malachite, and I uh, interrupt you. So uh, we can do. we can get back to that if you want, or yeah. I mean, while I'm mixing, we can okay. we can talk about malachite. So several people the, asked the, about the, is malachite poisonous? Yeah. <laughs> it's it is considered to be a chronic hazard because it is a copper carbonate mineral. But and please don't eat. So then you will be safe. So you see the difference. Look at that, so suddenly how that, I mean, it is cool, of course, Nicosia green, but it's absolutely, look at that. Cool green. <laughs> I just wanted to show you the, the real color on mm -hmm. the top. Also, Catherine asks if uh, malachite uh, alters color. Um, there is, it, yes. it yeah. can to uh -huh. some degree. We're actually going to start testing it. Um, it may alter color in, in combination with some, some pigments, and we need to test that. It's, it's, most of that information comes from old manuals. We're not certain if how true a lot of that is. Uh -huh. It's, it's somewhat stable. Um, it's a lot more stable in um, oil than, than uh, its cousin, azurite, which is blue, which tends to uh, become a little bit greenish over time. Of course, malachite in water-based paints like egg tempera is absolutely stable. See, it didn't even made it, make a dent on, on chromium oxide green the same amount of um, lead white. I want to remind you, so we don't put any fillers to our colors and um, it's not like we think then something wrong with fillers, it's just how we decided from the beginning in our company, do not put any fillers. So. Our chrome uh, oxide green will look uh, for you a little bit different and probably much more stronger than from another companies. I notice a little bit stringy too, which is kind of yes. interesting. Yes, yes. And that's without any additives. Uh, some of these colors become quite stringy. So it's a different behavior than what you might find with another company. Christina asks, how light fast are these greens overall? All of them are uh, very light fast. The um, cinnabar the green and cinnabar uh, green and chrome green may be uh, may have some issues, which we're again we're going to be testing because chrome uh, the chrome yellows used to have issues, uh, but in the 20th century they resolved this by by coating the pigment in a silicate so that. It's uh, less reactive and um, is is uh, shows good uh, good stability. But in combination, so what we are starting to do is test combinations of colors because they, they do react with each other. And um, um, but in our samples that we've had for years, uh, they they show they show very good stability. But obviously the green earths are very, very stable. Chromium oxide and the viridians are, are absolutely permanent. Or light fast. Light fast, yes. <clears throat> They're listed as a light fast category one in the AS, current ASTM standard for oil paint, which is being revised. We will keep you updated. Now let's see that with titanium.
By the way, the malachite's not yet available as a oil color. It is, the pigment is available, and we're planning on introducing malachite when? Don't say. <laughs> I'm I'm not given the yes I'm not given the date anymore because it's everything in our company if it doesn't work according what you know what we think it must be we will not release we thought then we will uh, release that color on uh, to the Christmas time didn't happen and we weren't so ready now, for that yeah but. yeah so. Uh, but it's in production, and definitely we will make a big announcement when we will have it. Here we go. <clears throat> yes, and Viridian is very transparent. So much more, it, again, it's a, it's a chromium oxide hydrate, much more transparent than a chromium oxide green. So while you asking questions, to do, oh, I mean answering questions. So uh, let's put that camera, and so I will show you exactly <coughs> what we were talking. So one by one, first what we were talking. This is the swatches I made afterwards, and uh, guess what? They already all dried. And that was a lot. And it was uh, we were doing this in Saturday. So that means, like, uh, by Monday, all of them were dry except what I mix with, um, with cadmiums. But now even that dried. And that would be not the situation. And um, so you can see, I, we had the question about how, how transparent. Uh, transparent uh, Tavush different from uh, Tavush. And you can see that this is quite yellow, um, you know, going... Uh, towards yellow and um, the tabush transparent. tabush transparent yes compared to the tabush, tabush right, you know. yes and here you can see definitely can see how um, Verona is much more warmer than Nic Nicosia so Nicosia is uh, cooler green so I was asked where to buy in East Europe you can buy f any of these colors uh, from our German website, our, it's our, 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 our facility in Germany, which is naturalpigments.eu. Uh, and Victoria asks, which red did you use to neutralize? Um, it's uh, cadmium red light. Yeah. And so we just chose that color, but it may not be the best color for neutralizing all of those. But we wanted to show you one and how they, how they all varied. So what are we looking at here? So here we go looking for the second what we were mixing, uh, the last one, I'm sorry, was what we were mixing with um, titanium and uh, lead. So here is Nicosia, and here is with lead, completely dried, and uh, with titanium, a uh, little bit sticky, but you can see how shift the color. And um, so here is our uh, chromium oxide green completely dried actually uh, it does dry quite fast and uh, of course viridian a little bit sticky but not bad actually not bad and so <clears throat> you see how powerful it is and as, like I said then uh, you probably will find our chromium oxide a uh, little bit more powerful than from other companies so just be aware of that and only because we don't we put, don't put, uh, put extender pigments yeah. in any of our colors. Yes. And same with Viridian. So I'm, you see how bluish it's like, uh, I'm, I don't know if it's visible on, uh, on camera, but here I can say then it's, it's absolutely like, as a, like blue color, if you cover completely the green. So Becky <laughs> asks, is malachite easy to mull? So if you want yes. to make your own... Yes, it's very, very it's easy. It's very easy. Very easy to It's make, absolutely, you know? yes. And yeah. so here's um, our malachite. And uh, here I did opposite. Here I did on the middle this malachite. And here I went with, um, you know, with more uh, lead white. And it's completely dried. And here's with, uh, neutralized with um, cadmium red light. Uh, Amy asks, uh, do you have a company outlet in the UK after Brexit? 
There is an import tax to pay now from German website. That's correct. And yes, you can get it from um, our a distributor. The uh, it's an on uh, a, a mail order or online distributor. The name is Supreme Paint Company, and they're in Devon, uh, in the UK. Uh, Lourdes <coughs> says that she uses the transparent Tavouche green. It's beautiful, but the particles are large. Yes, all the green earths tend to have larger particles. Not as large as malachite, but they are Malachite, larger. I can tell you this even here. <coughs> I don't know if, if, we'll, if we will see some. You see here? It's almost like sand. Yeah, so for large. some of you will be absolutely you you know some of you will you probably will discuss and say like no way uh, this is my color but for some of you it probably would be the best ever you you could have because you can build up the texture is quite good though. absolutely it's, it's, yeah. that's that's what's interesting yeah. to have texture in in paintings like but that. um you know but if for detailed we are, work it may be difficult yeah, yeah. yes and so if like if I will check with Tavush what um, uh, Lourdes said then so it's nothing even compared to so if yeah, I quite a bit it, different yeah, yeah. so it, but that's you know a lot of the green earths have uh, or a lot of the earth colors or mineral colors will have larger pigments uh, larger yes, particles la uh, larger yeah. particles yeah then, and then we keep this artificial. way yeah. uh, like I said so if you will grind malachite to smaller particles that will you will completely lose the color so it's why when you know companies tell you then so they're using like i don't know incredible minerals and grinding that to to smooth paste and call that like let's call turquoise it can't because that uh, turquoise will lose the color <laughs> uh, on smaller particles and so i wanted to show you this is um, uh, this is the chrome green I, I just wanted to remind how stringy uh, that color is. And um, it's quite dry too. So, because of the, due to the, uh, I believe due to the Prussian blue, it's just drying very fast. We have a question. Do you have trouble with the stringiness with Viridian? No, um, absolutely not. We it's actually, uh, our Viridian is not, stringy the it's the it's chromium. opposite yeah the chromium oxide green is is stringy yes and again because we don't put any pigment stabilizers any additives like that the color the behavior of the color is always dependent on the pigment and oil so um it's not mitigated at all by those um uh, by the additives which is which is used in all other uh, paint company brands we're the only company that doesn't use these additives. It was a choice we made early on. If anything, I, I already mentioned then Viridian is the fluffiest one, probably easiest to, to work with. Um, and again, quite powerful, but transparent. It's, it's unbelievable. In the one color, we, we have uh, two different uh, uh, properties. So, any questions? I'm, I'm just... So, the, yeah, the chromium green oxide. Uh, Catherine says the chromium green oxide looks like a lot of fun. Yes. I like it in watercolor, but never tried it in oil. Yeah, it's, it's a great color. This is the Viridian, and you're uh, uh, mixing with lead white. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's a rather buttery color, buttery. short, yeah. short uh, pigment. Yes. Very, yes. very different from our chromium oxide green and of course very different from the two historical hues, the cinnabar green and the chrome green, which tend to be a little more stringy. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so you can put on me and then I will say bye to everybody. So as always, we thank you for being with us today and um, see you next time. Don't forget next week, George has uh, uh, studio tips, rational approach to color palette, 
very interesting where he will show you uh, how 17th century changed everything on um, artist palettes and so um, very knowledgeable guy will talk to us about how to change <laughs> oh, way how we uh, put our palettes great thank you very much see you next time thank you bye now <laughs>